Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we're kicking off a design series. For the next four weeks, with the exception of next week, which is a special episode for my 100th episode, I'm going to have a different designer joining us to talk about what they feel are the design trends of 2022 and what they feel is most important to making your space feel full of design. So without further ado, I'm having, uh, let me introduce my guest, owner and designer of Transforming Spaces, Jeannie Morris. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great this morning or this afternoon, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today and for kicking off our design series. So, you bet. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have you on. Um, I know that you do a lot of great work in and around um, the local area, and um, you come with many years design experience and um, helping to transform homeowner spaces, um, whether that be in the form of a home that they plan to stay in from your design work or from home staging, getting it ready for sale, to list a home for sale. Um, so maybe you could start off just by telling us, since you do work in both aspects, what's the difference between design work and home staging? Is there a difference between what you would do for those two? There definitely is a difference. Okay. And so what I do is I kind of use this little analogy of a hand. Okay. So design and staging have the same things, but they operate from two different sides. Okay. So one side of the design, it's about the client. It's what they're interested in. It's their aesthetic. It's to make it theirs. The other side is the marketing side, and that's what staging is. So staging is all about creating an experience for our target buyer, something that is pleasing to the camera as well as pleasing to a visit. So that when they walk in, they can't click the check and, and check the boxes of this doesn't work, this needs work, this isn't going to fit. They can see it all put together in a way that's very appealing. Yes. And I can speak, you know, to that fact that there is definitely a difference in a home that is staged versus not staged. Um, and so especially for those clients who you know, maybe don't have a knack for, you know, for doing that and depersonalizing and really making uh, the home shine in its best light. Um, that is where, you know, hiring a professional to do that can definitely make a difference. Um, we see the home sell quicker and typically for a higher uh, price point when, when staged. So right. at least that's been right. my, that's been my experience. And I believe there are statistics that you have statistics that show that as well. I do. So I've been tracking my statistics uh, for the last three years. And on average, our homes sell in anywhere, depending on the year, from seven to 10 days on the market compared to what's happening in the space where the homes are being sold. Um, it, it ranges anywhere from 30 to 45 days. So when we stage it, there's an upfront cost because it takes a little time and it takes a little energy to put it together. Sure. But what we do is we save our clients money on the back end because they're not in the home paying the carrying costs as long. Right. Well, and you know what? All homeowners, um, you know, or sellers, well, I don't think they, not everybody realizes it when they go into selling a home, but every home seller ends up with a, a to-do list, right? Like the things that they they could or should get done to the home prior to listing it. Um, and I don't want to get too much down that path because I know we want to talk about design, but it definitely, you know, it definitely does make a difference. Um, you know, there are things that a buyer, like we live with as homeowners, and then you walk in as a buyer and you look at a home differently. So, um, so yes, definitely getting those things done and staging is, is all part of, there's a reason why model homes are set up and, uh, stage the right. way that they there's are. A reason, <laughs> there's a reason why builders have been doing it and it's yes. because it's a proven technique. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. So, so on the design side of things, you also help homeowners that have no intention of making a move and they want to stay in their space and you help them with design. 
Um, what aspects of design do you help them with? So typically it starts with a consultation and my job is to just listen to what the client needs. Sometimes they just need some things moved around because they're getting tired of the way that the room feels. They have pinch points that they don't like. Um, something isn't quite right. Uh, they don't like the bookcase anymore. And so we can, we can do that. The other is, is if they, wa if they want to refresh a bathroom, refresh a kitchen, refresh a first floor, um, because I do renovations on homes and flip them, I have trade contacts. And so my guys and me and the gals that are involved, we just step in and help where the client needs it. Okay. And so because you do so many different projects and because you're a designer by, um, by trade, like that, that's what you do. You obviously stay in touch with what is happening. And every year, you know, there's different things that are coming out. Some, some of the trends stick around for several years and others are in and out. Like, you know, they're gone before, you know, we even, some of us even knew that they were there. Um, so for, right. for this year for 2022, um, what are some of the design trends that you are seeing? Well, I think it's been influenced just like every other industry by COVID. Yeah. And the reality is, is on some of the appliances that I've got ordered for clients, we're waiting 12 months mm -hmm. with some of the furniture that we've got on order. We're waiting six to eight. Um, so it's been influenced a little bit by that, but also it's been influenced by the fact that we're at home so much. Grays used to be the thing. And they've had a long shelf life as far as trends go. Trends typically last anywhere from 15 to 20 years. And Gray's been with us for a while. But this year, we're seeing Sherwin-Williams and Benjamin Moore move more into the warmer tones. So both of them have picked a green. One calls it evergreen fog. The other one calls it October mist. Okay. But what we're seeing is, is we're seeing we're seeing an answer to the question of how can I enjoy living in my home and how can I give myself some comfort and peace? Right. So, you know, everybody like, again, with the grays and there are still, you know, there are still many out there that love the grays and they're still going to be around. Um, but like you said, like some of the color that's being brought in, it's your mm -hmm. space. So you need mm -hmm. to do what you feel comfortable with and, what makes you happy? What brings you joy, right? What, you know, right. what about your space? And the only caveat I would have for that is if you're planning to sell in the next three to five years and you're planning on hiring a painter, there's an expense to that. Sure. And there's, and, and so for you as an investment standpoint, if you came to me and asked me, what should I do? I'm going to recommend that we keep the palettes very neutral so that when you go to sell, you don't have something that has such a design specific look to it that you create a barrier when you're going to sell. Absolutely. And that is great advice to give to, like you said, any homeowners that are looking to sell within the near future. Um, I know as an occupational hazard, anytime I do a project to my home, even though I have no intention of going anywhere, I'm always thinking, you know, resale and putting it on the market. So um, I bring in some of my personal touches through photos and, you know, some of those things that are easy to change out and tend to keep, um, the colors and, you know, the, the remodels very, um, I like them to be timeless. So, yeah. And I think from a design perspective, when I'm working with someone that's investing in redoing a kitchen, redoing a bathroom, the best gift I think I can give them from advice and coaching as we go through the journey is how can I make sure that the decisions that we make are on trend, but they're not so on trend that in three years, you're going to wish you hadn't chose that tile, that color, that texture, that wallpaper. Let's, let's figure out how to have a different perspective on how to bring those elements in rather than the expensive things. Right. That, and that's, that's, such a great point and absolutely why bringing a professional in on some of these things. I know, um, you know, some of us out there feel we can, you know, we can pull things together and, oh, I know what I like and I can pick things out. And that's absolutely true. But having a designer 
someone who knows trends, knows what has been, what is currently, and what is coming. Maybe not exactly what is coming, but at, at least able to see the cycles and the trends. Um, you can give advice as to, okay, well, yes, absolutely, you could pick this tile. Just know that in five years, it may not be, you know, as quite yeah. as, you know, what you thought. So. And then in addition to that, what I would say is it's our job to be able to look at scale, to be able to look at form and function, to figure out balance and, and to know how colors play. So from the time you walk into a house, how to create a story that's a consistent story that has a look that meets what the house represents as well as what the the homeowner represents yes and you That's know what job. i think a lot of um like from the home buyer perspective when home buyers walk through a home not that we're talking we're talking about homeowners homes but you can tell when you walk through a home they can tell whether they realize that it's all of those things the form the function the does it match like the home but they feel it and experience it as walk you know while walking through a home um, and mm -hmm. so, and we do as well, you know, for our homes that we live in, again, mm -hmm. even if we don't intend to put our homes on the market, um, you know, it's how we live in the space and we feel that as we move from room to room. Mm -hmm. So, and I've noticed with, with some folks, they set up a home so that it functions for their family. Like, for example, I have a client who has three huge men. They're all six foot two and none of them are under 200 pounds. For them, when they watch a TV, they have a very specific way that they like to be angled for the TV. If we were to put them on the market, I would need to have their permission to rearrange those things so that when a prospective buyer that isn't six foot two over 200 pounds with three of them that all have their favorite place, right. that they can envision how that space can be there. So that's, that's the balance. Right. Absolutely. Yes, there definitely is a balance. And whether you are looking to put your home on the market and you want some professional expertise with staging or you plan to stay in your home and you want um, some professional advice, um, Jeannie, you are somebody that, um, you know, viewers can contact. And I appreciate you joining us today and sharing some of the trends that are in. So green, green is the color for 2022. Um, I feel mm -hmm. like it was just, was it last year or two years ago? It was blue. There were blue colors. So <laughs> I'm like, but that's yeah. nice to see color coming back, um, you know, so into homes. So thank yeah. you. Thank you yeah. so much. Anything else that you want to share with viewers before we uh, sign off? So Don't be afraid to, um, to wait to make a decision. And what I mean is, is sometimes you get in the mood where I just want to hurry up and switch things out. I would recommend go through your cabinets first, see what you have, because before you shop, you might have more than you think, and it might send you in a different direction. So um, if you get inspired to do something, I would suggest do the Marie Kondo thing and clean out first yeah. and see what you got. Okay. That is great advice. Well, thank you again so much for joining us, Jeannie. Thank you for kicking off Design Month. And um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you next time on Tea with Tracy. Tune in next Tuesday. It is the 100th episode, and there will be some special giveaways. So don't miss it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.